Lead generation is the lifeblood of our business. Today, I'm gonna to share with you rapid fire 40 lead generation ideas that can take your business to the next level. In order for a real estate business to grow, you have to have a consistent flow of leads coming into your business. So today what I wanna do is, is I'm gonna hit you with 40 rapid fire ideas so that when you get done hearing this video, you're gonna have some things you can take action on immediately to start making that lead flow come your way. Before I do, let me just encourage you, if you haven't had a chance yet, to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go ahead and do that. Also, when you get down there, ring that little bell button there. That'll give you a notification every time that we drop a new video that's gonna add value to your business. All right, let's start with little help posts. These are posts you're gonna post on social media where you're just asking your followers, your friends, the people that are connected with you for a little bit of help. This is where you're gonna go in and you're gonna simply say, I would love a little help here. I've got a buyer that is looking to buy in this area for this type of house. If you've heard of anyone that owns a house like that that might be considering selling, please let me know so that I can see if it might be a win-win for this buyer and someone that you know that owns a home. Number two is meet past clients for coffee, a cocktail, or lunch. This is something where we're just deepening those relationships. You don't have to ask them about to help you with your business. They're going to eventually ask you how your business is going. Build the relationships, deepen those relationships, and the referrals will come. Number three is host an open house. Nothing better out there for you to get toes to toes and nose to nose with potential buyers and sellers than holding an open Open house. Number four is expired listings. Don't sleep on that. There's opportunity there. These are sellers that have raised their hand and said that they wanted to sell. They either just didn't have the right price, weren't positioned correctly, or didn't have the right agent. Number five expands on that. Call six to 18 month old expired listings. These are listings that have weathered the storm, so to speak, where they got all the calls when they first went expired, but they're probably out there still considering selling in the right situation. Reaching out to these folks, there's less competition and there's more opportunity. Number six is host a first time home buyer seminar. This is something something where you would partner with a lender, maybe a credit repair person, maybe a someone that does home inspections, anyone that's involved in that first time home buyers process. And you're gonna host this where you can teach them the value of home ownership, show them what it means to own versus rent. This is a great way to tap into that very large, nearly half of the buyers according to NAR last year were first time home buyers. This is a great way to tap into that opportunity. Number seven is to develop a buyer's guide for newly engaged couples. These are folks that have life changes. Typically when people are buying or selling real estate, it comes down to a time when they have a life change, maybe a change in their job, maybe a change in having a baby, but especially when they're getting married because this is the time when people wanna to begin to plant roots. This is an opportunity for you to put together something that's gonna add value to them and an opportunity for you just to easily reach out to those folks and offer this free guide to them that's gonna help them drive back to your business. Number eight is optimize your Google My Business page. This is gonna give you an opportunity to find some organic leads. Every single person is going out there and they're typically going in and they're Googling for realtor help. They're starting their search online. This is a great way for you to start at the place where most people are gonna start by framing exactly what it is. It's a free page, it's offered by Google, and it's something you must take advantage of. Host a going away party for your seller is next. Everyone has friends, they're moving, they're maybe shifting to another city. This is a great way for you to get in front of all of their sphere of influence. You're the hero because you've helped them make that next move in life and I promise you're gonna get some referrals. Number 10 is host a housewarming party for your buyer. This is a time when you can invite the neighbors, their friends. It gets them an opportunity to meet some people that are celebrating the fact that they just bought this house. Again, puts you in a position as not just their realtor, but their friend that helped them have this life adjustment. Number 11 is join a lead sharing group like BNI. This is a place where everyone that comes, the price of admission, so to speak, is to have someone to refer to someone in that group. This is one of those where you're gonna be around other people that are looking to grow their business and by being in that position, referrals will flow. Number 12 is call FISBOs. Don't forget about those FISBOs that are absolutely out there needing our assistance now more than they've needed in a number of years. Prepare yourself by putting together a package or a type of program that you can add value to these for sale by owners and it's a mat not a matter of if, but when you'll get the opportunity to list those homes. The next group I wanna speak about are places that you can get leads sent to you where you don't have any upfront costs, but you actually have the opportunity just to pay a referral on the back. The first one of these is Veterans United Realty. This is a program where it is a lender that has a lot of people that are going ahead and getting pre-approved for VA loans before they move or they move from one base to the next. These referrals come in and they're ready to buy. These are qualified leads. So if you're someone that has worked with veterans in the past, I would highly encourage you, check out Veterans United Realty. 
14 is directed by your broker, but if your broker is a member of Op City, this is a great one that you can get, whether you're a new agent or an experienced agent, where you can receive leads that you don't have any upfront cost on. Op City is owned by Realtor.com, and they nurture these leads to a point where they're ready to purchase. At that point, then you're given an opportunity to compete quicker the better. They're gonna send this out to four or five people in your area. The first one to respond is the one that's connected with these leads. And this is a great way, whether you're brand new or you're experienced, to generate some of these leads. Number 15 is Homelight, another one of these where you'd have no upfront cost and you have the opportunity to pay a referral on the back. There are some minimum requirements on this one, so check it out and see if it might fit for you. Ojo is another one of these that comes in and you don't have any upfront cost. It does have a three-year minimum experience, but if you're someone that has three years experience or more, this is a great place to look for opportunity to generate additional leads. Estately is another site that requires three years experience, but it does give you another opportunity to find a different group of leads. This has some listings as well as some of the opportunities for you on the buyer side. Estately is a great one to check out as well. Redfin Referral Network is another no upfront fee place, but what this is, is this is Redfin where they don't have agents that are in place or they have too many leads coming in for the agents that they have. Redfin Referral Network is another one that you can generate some of these leads pretty easily. Number 19 is Rocket Homes. This is an outshoot of Rocket Mortgage. Obviously Obviously, these are folks that are going to be qualified beforehand with Rocket Mortgage. They're going to come in ready to buy. They're going to have their qualifications done. And these are folks that typically are just about ready to buy. Next up is UpNest. This doesn't have any upfront fees as well, but this is more on the listing side. They typically want some experience, but you're going to compete. They're going to really give the opportunity for you to give a presentation video-wise to the seller. There's going to be multiple people that will do this, and then the ones that, that they choose to list the home, then we'll pay that referral fee at the time of closing. If you're a newer agent, Agent Pronto doesn't have any minimum requirements as far as the experience or the number of transactions you've had. This is one that if you're a newer agent and you're looking for leads, Agent Pronto is a good one as well. The last one of these where there's no upfront fee is Fast Expert. This is one where you have to be the top 5% in your local network. It gives you the ability really to set yourself apart a little bit. These are folks, when you work with these folks, they're going to be looking for the best of the best. So this is one where if you bring your A game, you're going to have opportunity. I always talk about the fact that you can generate leads by sweat doing the work or by debt by buying leads. So we have to mention Zillow.com. Obviously Zillow leads is a great way if you're going to purchase some leads to find people that are further down the funnel and closer to being ready to buy. Right along those lines is Realtor.com, another place that you can buy leads. This is a great source that is a little bit further down the funnel as well. These are folks that are clicking on particular properties or asking to speak to an agent when they get to you. So there's opportunity here. Again, the quality of the leads is typically typically directly proportional to the quality of the follow-up. So make sure that if you're going to purchase leads that you're ready to do the work as well. Number 25 is geographical farming. Of course, this is the foundation of generating listings in our business, finding an area that you're going to be the expert in. Dive deep on what it is and the needs are in that community. Provide that value on a consistent basis. Stay in front of those folks and you're absolutely going to generate listing opportunities. Next up is simply ask for referrals. Everyone you come into contact with, say, hey, something along these lines. Just say, hey, I appreciate it in advance. You keep keeping me in mind in case you hear of someone that's considering buying or selling real estate, I promise I'll treat them like family and I really appreciate you keeping me in mind. Something along those lines is going to generate opportunities. When you make it a habit and you're asking everyone to keep you in mind, obviously that's going to generate the opportunities you're looking for. Number 27 is, is to post a listing or a property in a Facebook buy, sell, or trade group. These are local groups. Sometimes they'll have 20, 30,000 people in a local group. They give you the ability to post up information about a listing you have. What you'll notice in this is that a lot of times if people see this and they know someone that's interested or that is looking to buy, they'll put their names down there. These are people that you can direct message or private message and get, get an opportunity to see if they're working with another agent. By posting in these groups, it creates opportunities for you to generate generate leads for zero dollars. Number 28 is circle prospecting with a new listing. Hey, a new listing just came on the market. This is calling all of the neighbors and letting them know that there's a new property that's coming on the market. Simply saying, hey, we just want to let you know about this in case you have family or friends that might be considering or wanting to move into your neighborhood. Great way to have start conversations with sellers. Let them know that you're going to keep in touch with them and through this process and you'll let them know when it sells because it will affect their value. This is one of those where you're calling for the potential to find a buyer, but there's opportunities on the seller side as well. 
Next up is circle prospecting with something that just recently sold. Again, we're talking when we were first talking about this is potentially finding somebody that knew of someone that might want to live in their neighborhood. This is where we're letting sellers know about a sale, homeowners know about a sale in their neighborhood that affects their value. Creates a great opportunity for us to speak to them about how this affects their value to find out if there's a price where they're going. If it doesn't come out about whether they're thinking about selling their place, just simply end the call this way. I'd be the worst realtor in the world if I didn't at least ask if there's a price where you guys might consider selling. Number 30 is using buyers as baits. Again, we're talking about circle prospecting here. If you've got a buyer that has not been able to find exactly what they want, but they're very specific, they know they want a four bedroom in a specific neighborhood, look up all the owners of those four bedroom homes and simply call them. The script is gonna be something along these lines. Hey, this is Jimmy Burgess with Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Beach Properties of Florida. I'm working with a buyer, a potential buyer, that is looking for a four bedroom house in your neighborhood. I'm just calling to see if you've heard of any of your neighbors that might consider selling. If we find the right place, these folks might might be willing to pay a premium for that ideal place for them. This is a great way to start having the conversations. I promise you, if they're thinking about selling, they'll let you know. But again, if you don't get to the end and they've not mentioned anything about their place, utilize that line. Hey, I'd be the worst realtor in the world if I didn't at least ask if there's a price where you guys might consider selling. Next up is probate listings. This is where someone passes away and the property has to go through the probate process or through the court system to settle out the estate. In these situations, there's an executor that is named to the estate. Once that person is named by the court, they have the ability to sell and their job literally is, is to settle out the estate, to liquidate assets. They have the ability to sign a listing agreement to sell a property. That's their charge in reality. So if you can identify these folks by going to your local, every state is different, but going in our area, it's going to your county clerk's office and getting the details and asking for the pages. It will tell you who that person is. Typically, sometimes they'll even have contact information. Offering to give them a free updated valuation of the property and asking them if you can help in any way preparing any details they need for the estate. By being of service to these folks, I'll promise you're going to get listing opportunities. Next up is to host or go live on social media with a virtual open house. Walking people through, you know, we still have the opportunity when you go live where it prompts a number of the people that are connected with you and those in the surrounding area to see that you are live right at that moment. Going out instead of just hosting an open house which like we talked about earlier, hosting a virtual open house gives you the ability to really walk through someone to a house, generate the opportunity for someone that might want to see it in person. It also gives you the ability that that is going to be saved onto your social media media as long as you market to do so. This gives you an opportunity when you go live to find some additional people that might be considering selling or buying in your local area. Next up is call buyers from 2019. These are folks that could not have possibly bought at a better time. They've got more equity than you can imagine for that short of a period of time. Checking in with these folks and saying, hey, I've just noticed that you had bought in 2019. Wanted to see if you're still loving your house. Uh, many of the people that have been through the pandemic that bought a house pre-pandemic are prob probably thinking, well, there's certain things that we wish we would have had. We wish we would have had more outdoor living space. We wish we would have had that extra bedroom. We wish we would have had that home office, whatever it is. Going into the MLS and finding those folks that bought in 2019, checking in with those folks and seeing how they're doing is some opportunity that most people are looking past right now. Next up is calling Airbnb owners. These are people that most of the time, if they're managing it themselves, leave their phone number actually on Airbnb. These are typically investors. Investors have less emotion and they're typically not someone that sits still. They're either thinking about repositioning property or they're thinking about buying another property or they're getting into a cash crunch and thinking they want to sell a property. Focusing in on calling and checking in with these Airbnb hosts and seeing if they're thinking or considering buying another property or if they're considering moving one of their properties into something else is a great way to you, for you to find listings and potential buyers as well. Number 35 is help other agents that have gotten out of the business or in the process of getting out of the business. You know, when the market changes like this, we will see people that will leave the business. Many of those people still have one, two, three, maybe even up to five to 10 people that they were working with that still want to buy, but it wasn't enough to keep these folks in the business. Going to these folks and offering to pay them a referral fee on the folks that they have been working with that they refer to you. Going to these folks and adding value. In a lot of cases, they're gonna have more confidence in your ability to help these folks than they had in themselves. This is a great place to generate some referrals and find a few extra transactions in the coming year. 
along the referral line, also targeting folks that are in feeder markets, other agents that are in feeder markets for the market that you serve is a great way to generate referrals. Heidi Harris did it this way when she first started. She sent a handwritten note that said, I love paying referral fees to the feeder market that she's in. You wanna enhance this a little bit, offer 30% instead of 25%. Get this going. When you build these relationships with these agents in these feeder markets, it's not just something where you get one off, it's something where you can build and grow with them for the years to come. 37 is to help other agents that are overwhelmed with the number of leads they have coming in. There are some top producers, especially single agent top producers, that are out there that have more leads coming in than they can handle, or they're getting referrals that they can't handle in other markets that they don't focus on. By being an asset to these folks, offering to host open houses for them and making it easy for them to report that information to their seller, being someone that they can count on that's gonna be able to maybe 50-50 want some of these deals with people they pass to you. By helping these top producing agents, I promise they're gonna help you you as well. Number 38 is call renters. You can get lists that will give you renters' names and phone numbers. And calling these folks and just giving them an opportunity to understand how valuable home ownership is to them, not just the tax advantages, but in most markets right now, you know, you have the opportunity to give them the ability to see that they could have a monthly payment in most cases that is less than what they're paying in rent. Also, in a lot of cases with first-time home buyer programs, you're gonna have programs where they can put so little down that it's almost as it's almost less than what they're paying on their first month, last month, and rent and they're also their damage deposit they have to put up front when they're purchasing a house. Tapping into this group that NAR says represented over 48% of all purchases on the buyer side last year, which is first time home buyers, is a great way for you to add value to a group of people that absolutely could use your help. Producing video content that generates leads is another one that's a great way. This could be short form where you're just basically saying three things people wish they knew before moving to your city. Or maybe it's a longer form video that talks about five things people need to know before buying a home. Whatever it is, make it specific to your local area. By producing these types of video content on a consistent basis, you will become known as the local resource and expert for all things real estate. Last but not least, my favorite of all time, the one that generates the most business for everyone that I work with, unsolicited video CMAs. This is where you're getting a list of all of the people that you know that own homes, people that may have said they were gonna sell, people that may um, in, be in your farm area, people that were buyers of yours in the past, or people that are neighbors and friends and family. They're not asking us for this, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna record our screen and we're gonna give them an updated idea of the value of their home. By doing this, I promise, because I've seen it time and time again, you're going to generate listing opportunities. We all know that generating leads is the lifeblood of our business. I hope you found some that you can apply immediately in your business. If you have, leave a comment below if I've forgotten something that maybe works for you. Also, make sure that you go and subscribe and also hit that bell on our YouTube channel. I hope this has been helpful and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. I specifically chose the video below for you because it builds on the one you just watched. I hope it's helpful and I'll talk to you soon.